Hey Hams, this is Kevin, uh, AD0IM. I haven't done a video in about five months, and I got this uh, little gadget in the mail today, and I thought, well, let's go ahead and take a look at this thing on camera and uh, see if it amounts to anything. So what is it? It's an MFJ 300 watt dummy load, model 260 Charlie from Starkville, Mississippi. Now, I've already started to take the cover off, which is why I decided to make the video because as I was doing so, um, you know, it's just these screws, I, I don't know what they put these in with, some kind of uh, massive, uh, massive power driver or something because they were really hard to get out with just a plain old Phillips head, Craftsman Phillips head screwdriver. So I still got the other four to go and they were pretty stiff. So, uh, reposition the camera here a bit and see if these uh, next four come out any easier than the first four did. And the answer to that is no. This one, I think my screwdriver is not quite the right size. Okay, so that one's loosened up. Let's just see if I can get them loose first. Yeah, that one's come loose. That one came loose, but it took a second. Yeah, just a lot of force required to get these to to loosen up and without stripping them. So yeah, they're all they're coming off now. So we'll go ahead and get these off, and there may be a little. TV time that takes place here in post-production. I don't, <coughs> you know, I know what the point of a dummy load is, is, and that's to give you the ability to perform testing with a transmitter without having a whole bunch of uh, RF go out into the uh, go out into the world without uh, any purpose. So you can. Uh, you can do all sorts of testing, and as long as you have a properly rated one, and this one's rated to 300 watts, and the biggest transceiver I have is 1,000 watts, and I've got a kit, one of these Q, uh, QCX kits. Very new at all of this. So um, uh, let's see if the cover will come off of this now that I've got the screws out. And we'll learn together what's inside of a dummy load. And apparently, it's a metal shield covering up something. I don't know what. I'm going to put some light on this and I'm going to look through it off camera through my magnifying glass. See if I can see what's in there. I can't really see what's in there. Um, but it is round. It looks like it looks like uh, you know I can't really see. I'll have to take this cover off. Uh, which I'm not excited about doing considering how long it took to get the lid off, but uh, I can't really tell what's in there. So let's go ahead and take these four screws off. And see if that reveals anything. And these are not coming off any easier than the other ones. They really, they either really don't want you messing with these, or they just put them in too tight. And, and they're just screws. They're not nuts. Uh, they're not nuts and bolts. They're just tapping screws, it looks like. So, yeah, I'm going to have to change screwdrivers here. I don't have a ton of tools. Like I said, I'm not... I am not Tim the Tool Man Taylor. Sorry, ABC, if I infringed on a copy right there. Okay, so this one appears to work well. I think my next door neighbor is working on his deck again. I can hear a whole bunch of racket going on there. So I know normally the videos I've done over the last year have been mostly about um, maybe how I've got my shack set up. Uh, I think there's a little bit of POTA mentioned in there. 
couple of antennas. So, um, so this is really the first time I've looked at a piece of gear with any at any level of detail. So it's kind of new to me. So please be nice in the comments. Um, but uh, look, we've got the last one. Finally found the right screwdriver. Apparently, I was going to have to go to the one that had, you know, drill bits. So, wow. Now, you know, I'll, I'll be the first to tell you guys. I don't even know what that is. It looks like a a big long. Uh, piece of ferrite or something. I have no idea what this is. So uh, I will uh, take a picture of it and send it to a friend of mine. The good news was there were no loose parts rattling around in here. This is what it is. This is a 100 watt uh, HF dummy load. Um, that's it. And this, there's a little chart on the back that tells you <clears throat> how long you can uh, transmit into this thing. Uh, at various power settings before you get yourself into trouble. As I've said, my uh, my radios are all 100 watts, so I can't get into too much trouble with this thing. So, yeah. All right. So, so yeah. So that's what it is. <coughs> I will uh, put this thing back together and uh, maybe plug it into something. And see, it's advertised as a 50 ohm. Uh, a 50 ohm dummy load so we'll have to attach it to something and uh, see if that's really true so we'll uh, we'll do that here in the next uh, the next segment all right so it was a carbon composition resistor and I'll put another picture of it uh, right about here in the uh, in the actual video when we uh, get into post-production <clears throat> so in the meantime I'm, I'm curious about one thing really and that is if this thing is really a, if that's really a 50 ohm resistor. And because that's what it needs to be in order to, to really do the, the job that we're paying it to do. <coughs> and the best way that I know of to figure that out is to get out the old Nano VNA and plug it in and let's see what it thinks. So I'm going to get the VNA uh, set up and uh, calibrated here. And then uh, we'll see how uh, see how the dummy load does according to the VNA. So be right back. <coughs> okay, so we've got the uh, nano plugged in here. Um, just a little bitty skinny uh, bit of coax. I don't know the nomenclature on this. Let's see what it says. All you older hands right now are going. Look, look at this fool. He doesn't even know what coax he's using. And you would be right. You would be right. So LMR 100, it looks like. How do we know that? Because that's what it says, LMR 100. All right, so there's that. And here's Mr. Nano. And uh, I've, got, uh, I've got the Nano uh, showing me the resistance uh, at the other end of the, uh, of the line here, which is our dummy load. Okay, pardon my jumpiness here. I'm not used to doing these kinds of videos. There are really too many videos. And we can see right here that we're at 49.3 ohms. So that's a pretty good match. It's uh, really darn close to what it says it is, which is a 50 ohm load. Now, I'm not going to plug this into a radio and start transmitting a bunch of stuff just to see if it can take it. But, uh, but I was curious about whether um, it was uh, using... Uh, if that resistor inside of it was the value that uh, it's advertised to be. And you can see in the dummy load here, I've, or I'm sorry, in the nano, uh, you know, I've got my start frequency kind of at 80 meters, and the stop frequency is up at uh, 6 meters. So it's uh, it's sweeping all along that, apparently. <coughs> and it's given us, like I said, 49.3 ohms. So that is going to be the extent of this uh, this experiment. Um, the MFJ, turn it around to the other side here, uh, 
MFJ 260C 300 watt dummy load, uh, a dry dummy load, as opposed to the big giant oil cans um, that you can buy online uh, or at your local uh, your local amateur radio store if you're lucky enough to have one within a short drive of where you live. So uh, that's all I've got tonight. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope to be a little more productive on the videos well, this winter. Actually, work so. Until then, uh, 73 everybody, this is Kevin, uh, radio station AD0IM. Bye-bye.